How small is too small? It's something I often think about. The ZX01 is a mini cube PC that easily fits in the palm of your hand. So, what can you do with it? Well, it's a capable office PC, retro gaming console, and 4K media player. The box promised me eye-popping visuals, but that's just false advertising. My eyes didn't even bulge. Ah, my iris. The cube comes with the latest Intel Celeron N5105 10 watt processor, which is 4 cores, 4 threads, and features Intel UHD graphics. All units come with 8GB of 2933 onboard memory, and storage is available from 128GB up to 1TB. Storage is handled by a 2242 M.2 SATA SSD, which you can upgrade yourself. But opening the cube isn't easy. There are four screws underneath, holding the rubber feet in place, but getting the back plate off is annoying. You need a thin tool to pry it open. The ZX01 is available on AliExpress and probably elsewhere. I bought the 256GB model for this review, which had Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. Considering what you get, I think these cubes are competitively priced. It was also kind of nice to just plug in the mini and have it working straight away for once, compared to all the barebone minis I usually buy, which come with no memory, storage or OS included. In the box is the ZX01 mini PC, the USB-C power supply, and a HDMI cable. The cube has dual USB 3 on the front, one USB 3 on the back, gigabit ethernet, 3.5mm audio jack, and the USB-C port, which is for powering it only. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are also included. Oh, a cool bonus extra is the micro SD card reader on the side. Good for extra storage of retro games, movies, or whatever else. Alright, well I'm aiming to have a comprehensive list of budget mini PC reviews, so let's add the ZX01 to the benchmark list. It has the exact same processor as the Mealy Quieter 3. I've also thrown in the faster Pentium NUC 11 Essential and the ultra budget JK01 Mini as comparisons. The single core benchmark is what we expect from the N5105. Multicore is where things become more interesting. The score was inconsistent sometimes around 680, and other times 770, which is quite the difference. So as per usual, I averaged the first three scores. Hardware info was showing that the power limit was being tripped, which looks to be due to the VRM on the board unable to keep up a steady 10 watts of power for long durations. Still, the Mealy Quieter 3 comes back lower, so it's not boosting clocks to the maximum either. Long story short, the N5105 CPU should be hitting around 770 points in all core Cinebench under optimal cooling conditions, and both units failed to max out the CPU consistently. Passmark had a similar score for both units. 3 d Mark TimeSpy shows the ZX01 ahead by a few percent in both DX11 and DX12. Finally, for the video encoding test, the Cube finished the task faster than the Mealy Fanless PC by 16%. That is a big difference for the exact same processor. As mentioned earlier, the ZX01 comes with a KingSpec SATA SSD. It heavily focuses performance on read speeds over write. Here's how it compares to the EMMC storage found in the Mealy Quieter 3. The write speeds for sequential files on the cube and random 4K are really lagging behind, which means it's slower to copy files to the storage drive but it easily does better in all read tests, which means faster loading times. Alrighty then, let's check out video performance. A 4K movie in VLC media player doesn't drop a single frame. 4K 60fps is close to being played back perfectly. There's a drop of one frame every few seconds. In the test, 83 frames out of 21,730 were dropped. That's 0.38%, which I think is close enough. And of course, lower video settings played back just fine. This isn't the box you buy for PC gaming, unless you know its limits and want to play old school or indie titles. But here are three simple games I did try out. Two of them run full speed. Canvas the area. But Hades couldn't reach 60 frames per second at 1080p. What many will find this little GameCube useful for is playing 
GameCube games? Well, sort of. It's actually not that great, and depends on the title. Wind Waker only runs full speed at native resolution. Need for Speed couldn't hold 60 FPS, even at native res. And neither could Metroid. So I wouldn't say that's a great result. Wii games use a bit more graphical power on average, so you get slightly worse results from that library on average. For PS2, I tried Tekken Tag Tournament, which is a fairly simple game to emulate, and again, no 60 FPS. So not good for PlayStation 2 either. But this cube is good for Sega Dreamcast and the easier to emulate systems below it. I'll do a full retro game guide with this mini PC using Batocera in a future video. Watch out for it. Idle Power Draw isn't amazing, but 24 watts for max is a good result. Max CPU temperature reached at 21C ambient was 83, which is okay. Fan noise wise, the cube is basically silent at idle, so let's listen to how it sounds under load. Not much noise either. Cool! So the ZX01 mini PC may not have eye popping visuals when it comes to gaming, but it didn't overheat and it doesn't sound like a jet. And in the mini PC space, those are definitely wins. It's not perfect, but I was expecting a complete dud. And surprise, it doesn't suck. It's good for browsing the web, office work, YouTube, a media station, retro games. I think this form factor is starting to get close to the limit of how small we can go, especially if we still want to have any decent ports on the mini PC itself. But I'm glad it exists. Anyway, what do you think about this Chewy Larkbox clone? Let me know in the comments and stay tuned for more mini PC antics. See you later guys. Cheers.